You are entering the bonus stage, a podcast produced in association with OceanOfBees.com, with your host Marauder and Phoenix Nine Two Three, a podcast for all gamers, console and PC alike. Welcome to Bonus Stage. Greetings and welcome to Bonus Stage, a podcast produced in association with OceanOfBees.com. As always, I'm your host Marauder, and I'm Phoenix Nine Two Three. And that is officially the first time I ever got that intro right on the first try. <laughs> How many episodes is this in? 30. I don't know. It's 30. <laughs> 30 something. 30 something. Uh huh. Oh, man. No, but for those of you who have been listening, I always mess that up. It's just kind of a thing that we do that no longer is a thing we shall do. Anyway. As always, I'm Marauder, and today we're going to be talking about a whole bunch of stuff, namely two things. The first being, of course, the new Nintendo 3DS, as well as uh, just Nintendo in general, I guess. I'm going to try to armchair an entire company from from the safety of the internet. <laughs> yeah, since they're practically the only ones doing anything right about now. Yeah. But this is episode 32. We're recording this September 1st, 2014. Happy Labor Day. I don't know what you would do on Labor Day other than not go to work, which is a plus. Except for those in retail. (laughs) Yep. Except for people who work retail. You know, sadly, I expected mail today, and when I didn't have anything in the mailbox, I was really disappointed, <laughs> because my copy of Dagorampa 2 is supposed to be here on Tuesday, and uh-huh. I was like, oh, maybe it'll come a day early, so I went down to the mailbox this morning, I was all disappointed, <laughs> and then and then as I'm walking away, I'm like, maybe it'll come later today, I mean, it, it is only Labor Day, oh, <laughs> never right. mind, they, they don't deliver on Labor Day, uh-huh, anyway, all right, so. We're going to get, uh, let's, let's talk about, obviously, what uh, a lot of people on the internet are talking about, which is Nintendo, uh, a couple days ago, in a Japanese Nintendo Direct, showed off a new Nintendo 3DS, uh, labeled the new 3DS. They really <laughs> suck at naming things, don't they? They do. Um, I don't, actually, to be honest, I don't think they were ever any good at naming anything. Um, because if you look at any of their consoles in general, uh, it, you know, start with the, it's the Nintendo Entertainment System. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Okay, alright, it's getting a little, getting a little on the nose, but at least I know it's a new system. It's the Nintendo 64. Okay, guys, we, you can't just start putting numbers at the end of these things. It's, I mean, even with the handhelds, it was the Game Boy, Game Boy Pocket, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, I mean, but at least you knew it was a new system. Um, I guess, I guess we'll start with the name. Well, let's describe what this is going to be. So they're releasing two models. Um, one is just the standard 3DS size, uh, and the other is going to be the XL 3DS size. Uh, it's going to have the most notable features being an extra joystick, which is more like a little nub or something. Not not necessarily like the slider that's on the 3DS now, but it's more of like it's, a... It's, it's more like, uh, just think of a laptop, how it has that little nub in the center of the keyboard. Yeah, for those it, of you it, who it's, it's, are... It's, <laughs> it's like that. Yeah, for those of you old enough to remember those, that's kind of what it's like. Uh-huh. Uh, they, they state it specifically for camera control. Uh... Which, okay, fine. Personally, I would have made it the same size as the as the original slider stick. And just set them parallel to each other. Move the buttons down, you know? Yeah. And and just have it be... I guess, I guess look more like a... Like a Wii U Pro Controller. Um, the other additions they're making is they're going to have uh, better 3D... It's not going to blur when you look at it from an angle, or so they say. Well, well, it's not going to blur when you slightly tilt it yeah. off from center. <laughs> yep. I like the 3D, and I have the 3D on quite a bit when I play my 3DS, but sometimes I'm just not in the mood to hold it steady. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I'm resting on my bed, or I'm you know, on a bus or something, and it's just like, it's not practical to have 
the 3D on when it moves around so much, despite your best efforts. Um, it's going to have a two extra buttons. Uh, we'll get back to the buttons in a second. But two extra buttons, a ZL and a ZR, so similar to, say, the Wii U Pro Controller or the Wii Pro Controller. Um, and the and it's going to have a NFC chip, so it's going to be able to interact with all their new Amiibo figurines that they announced at E3. Supposedly, I read they, they were also going to release a portal kind of device for it if you had the original 3DS. So, you know, if if you have an older model, you it, you might just want to buy the, the portal rather than buying the whole new system. And the biggest addition being it's going to have a faster CPU, which is going to enable... Uh, pretty much games that are going to be exclusive to this new 3DS. Uh, most notably, they said that Xenoblade Chronicles, which is one of my favorite RPGs ever and one of my favorite games of all time, which is on the on the Nintendo Wii last generation, is coming to this new 3DS, and it's because of the new processor and the faster CPU that they are able to do this port. Um... So yeah, that's that. I have a couple issues with this 3DS, both in terms of its design and in terms of its, I guess, release in general. Now, first off, I just want to state, I'm not angry about it. I'm not upset about it. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to rant about it or anything. I did just get my XL back in June. And to be honest, I've only had it for about a month because it was in for repair so often. <laughs> um, you know, so to hear this announcement of a new 3DS, it's kind of annoying given the fact that I just bought mine. But that happens with anything, to be completely honest. I mean, if you buy a PlayStation 1 and then they go, oh, PlayStation 2 is coming out. Like six months. Well, it's like whenever you buy a phone, you know, a new smartphone, like six months later a new one comes out. Yeah, that's, that's better and faster and better. It's not like I. It's not like I'm, I regret my purchase of my 3ds XL because I got it for like a really, really good price. Uh, I believe like under a hundred dollars. So I'm, I'm not upset. And I, it was something that I wanted. I was debating between getting a 3ds XL or getting a PS4, and I decided to get a 3ds XL. I'm gonna have to get a PS4 though. By the way, did you hear? No. Persona 5 that was supposed to come to PS3 is mm -hmm. being moved to the PS4. Oh. So, yeah. Okay. Gonna, gonna have to get a PS4. Anyway, um, back to this 3DS. So it's it's not its release that's really upsetting. I, I just, my issue with it is, well, first let's talk about the way it's designed. Um, I don't like the C-Stick at all. Uh, I, I think it looks really awkward. Obviously, I I don't want to judge it too harshly until it comes out, but it just looks like it's in an awkward spot. It's like above the face buttons, and it's really tiny. So I guess I'll have to see how that works. But my biggest complaint is with the shoulder buttons. Because they're adding the shoulder buttons in, the ZL and ZR, they're actually making them completely... I don't know what the word is. Horizontal. It's complete. Well, they're in line with the other two shoulder buttons, so to hit them, you have to reach farther into the into the device to hit them. They're not staggered like a PS4 controller or a Xbox controller or a Wii U controller. They're like, if anyone remembers the original, um, the original Pro controller for the Nintendo Wii, how it had those two little <laughs> buttons that were right next to the shoulder buttons. Yeah, I, right Right now I'm holding my 3DS, and it, it's an XL, and my fingers just, like, reach the edge, like, they, they completely cover the shoulder buttons, but that's as far as my fingers go. To hit those ZL and ZR buttons, I actually have to lift my entire hand forward. Yeah, you'd either have to move your to... hand or shift your hand up to actually hit in the area where uh, those buttons would be. Yeah, that's... Um, I think that's a major... That's going to be a major problem. Um, 
I was talking with LZF uh, yesterday, actually, about how I really think they should have staggered them, like a PS4 controller or, you know, a more traditional button setup like that. And he was talking about how, well, they worked within the design parameters they had and they fit it all in to the original, like, dimensions of the system. Okay, that doesn't mean it's not a bad thing. You know, that doesn't mean that it's poorly designed. That just means that they were too lazy to redesign the system. Which he was talking about portability and... Um, you know, how it, how it would hamper people being able to put it in their pocket. Well, they weren't really thinking when they made the 2DS, didn't they? Yeah, but my argument is the 2DS was also not thought of as a portable system in that same in that same respect, given the fact that it doesn't fold and it's quite large. But then you look back on, you know, people still drug around the Game Gear and the Lynx and other bigger systems. And with Nintendo supposedly trying to go towards a more... Uh, to hit a more hardcore market... It's the hardcore market that doesn't care about how thick the system is. You know? Um, so I, I honestly think they should have probably redesigned those shoulder buttons. And they just might. I mean, I don't know for sure if the design they showed off in the video is the final design. Or if they're going to slightly alter it. I'd personally like to see them stagger those shoulder buttons. Because, like you said fingers just barely rest over well comfortably enough they rest over the shoulder buttons but to reach in farther would be a little awkward mm -hmm. um my other complaint or actually this is more of an observation i guess not a complaint but is this a new system or is it not like they're calling it the quote-unquote new and yes the news in quotes 3ds but they're still naming it as a 3DS. But it's going to have exclusive games to it. Yeah. I think... So there's there's two ways this could go. One, they release it and everybody who has a 3DS has to upgrade. Like, that's just it. Like, they come out with all these games and like Xenoblade and, for example, if they maybe ported over the other Project Rainfall games like Last Story and... Uh, Pandora's Tower. You know, if they if they made an effort to bring out these exclusive games, that would force everyone to upgrade. The other way it could go is something like the Nintendo DSi when they when they launched that. Or I guess if you want to go more retro, like the Nintendo 64 expansion pack, where there's you can play like 98% of the library, but if you want to play those 2% games, you know, over there you're going to need the new hardware. Mm -hmm. And I think that's more what they're aiming for. Well, the thing is, is I think that uh, probably all the new Nintendo games that are going to be coming out afterwards are going to be, you know, fully utilizing the new 3DS's features. While other developers, I honestly think they're probably not going to. Not as See, much. Just just because I think that uh, the wider market at the time would be to target the original 3DS in XL. Well, for example, the... Um, I, I, how many units has the 3DS sold as a whole? Like 40 plus million? So, if you're a developer and you want to make a game for the 3DS, and you sit down with your team and you go, okay... We're going to make a game for the 3DS. Do we make a game that will play on the old systems too, as well as the new one, and, and hit the widest possible target? Or do we just develop for this new system and alienate 40 plus million people who won't be able to buy our game unless they have the new hardware? I mean, if, if this takes off and they sell, say, 10 million units, that's great. And then they can you know, everyone will develop for it. But if they don't, and it just becomes kind of a niche thing, uh, how many developers and how many games are actually going to come out for it? I don't know if I'm reading this chart right. Huh. That's weird. I won't say anything. 
I'll figure it out. <laughs> okay. Well, I do know it was. it's roughly like 40 million people, or 40 million, I should say, units sold of the 3DS. Okay, so then I guess I was. There. So then I guess I was right. Uh, it says uh, 40, uh, 44 million units. Yeah, okay. I... 44 million units shipped. Okay. As well, of that's... June. That's still a ridiculous number. Yeah. Um, and given the fact that the 3DS is only about three years old, a little over three years, um, it's it's an, it's an interesting thing. Now, I can see why Nintendo would want to do this, and I understand why they want to do this, because obviously they want to make money. And the best way to make money is to have people buy hardware. So what do you do? You release new hardware that you try to entice people to actually purchase. You look at, you know, the DS, and they had the D- the original DS, and then they came out with the light, and people bought that, and then, pe- then the DSi, and the DSi XL, and every single time that they came out with new hardware, there was a spike in sales. Um, so I think what happened was they made the 3DS XL, and they went, huh, I, you know, where do we go from here? And so they threw, I think they're really kind of throwing this at the wall and seeing if it'll stick. Is what I think they're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing that could possibly happen is the same thing that happened with the Game Boy Color. Is I think when did the Game Boy Color come out? Like ninety eight. I think so. It was. Well, I'll say ninety seven. I'm not sure, but sometime in the mid nineties. The Game Boy, the original Game Boy, had been out since nineteen eighty nine. I want to say. Mm-hmm. And so, 1989 to 1998, they were running on essentially the exact same hardware. And developers came to Nintendo and they were like, we just were so sick and tired of working on this ancient hardware. I mean, they had the Game Boy Pocket and the Game Boy Light in Japan and things like that, but it was essentially the same hardware. And so, they kind of released the Game Boy Color as a, to appease the developers, maybe? Mm-hmm. And and then because the, the Game Boy Advance came out like three years after that, and so the Game Boy Color I think was just more of a stopgap system, which this new 3DS might turn out to be. They might have a new handheld, you know, in development, and they're just like, well, we need something for the next two years, just to get us over this hump, and this is it. So it'll be interesting to see if when it comes out. It's supposed to come out, in, like I said, October 11th in Japan, and they have not all announced any other release dates for it yet in either Europe or the United States. But they did say that it would be coming out sometime in 2015. So, that's interesting. Um, I don't know. On the one hand, I'm going to buy it because I love Xenoblade Chronicles. Like I said, it's one of my favorite games of all time, so the, the option of playing it on a portable system is... Is in, is pretty great. enticing. Yeah, and it's not going to be that much money. I mean, if they already announced the, the pricing structure for Japan, so if it translates over here the same way, the new 3DS should come out at 170 and the new 3DS XL will be 200 Which is pretty much what the prices of the 3DS and 3DS XL are now. Right, which are the same prices they are, the previous models are currently. Um... So, and, and, and it, it's not that big of an expenditure if you look at, like, oh, I gotta buy a PlayStation 4, that's $400. Oh, I gotta buy an Xbox One with Connect, that's $500. You know, this is 200 bucks, and you can, and you can trade in your old model, um, you know, for credit towards it. So it, it, it might not be that big of a kick. I still think it's a little strange to do, to just split your market so abruptly in half. Mm-hmm. But, but I mean, it's not, I wouldn't get super upset over it. I mean, if they do this next year, like it, like in 2015, when you, when <laughs> 2015, you buy it, they release a newer, newer version of the new 3DS. Yeah. That adds in like another button and then they're like, oh man, um, you can play, uh, oh God, if they put a Game Boy Advance slot back in it, that would be something <laughs> incredible. I'd buy that in a second. Um, but you know, like, so I, now I've been watching videos on YouTube from other people and, and reading up on some articles and, and some people are saying they're pulling a Sega and 
because Sega like buried themselves in the '90s in hardware because they had the the Genesis, and then they came out '91 with the '91. Um, I don't want to say '92 with the Sega CD. Then '93 was the 32X, and then '94, '95 was the Sega Saturn. So it was like every year they kept coming out with all these add-ons and extra systems. And I don't think it's the same thing here, um, mainly because Nintendo has developers behind the 3DS. You know? Yeah. And it won't be as painful, because, like, the new one's going to be able to play all the other 3DS games and DS games. So it's like, any developer who sits back and says, okay, let's make a game that'll play on everything, can still target the market that has the new 3DS. It's not like what Sega was doing, where they go, do we develop this game for the Sega CD, the Sega 32X, or the Sega Saturn? Because they're all completely different. You know? And yep. then... And then developers just go, I, I just, we just don't want to develop for a company that every year throws out new hardware. This is more or less an incremental upgrade. I wouldn't necessarily call it a new system. But in some respects it is. It's kind of this weird, again, kind of a stopgap system that, similar, I guess, to the Game Boy Color, where there, there are specific games that'll play on it that you need the Game Boy Color for, but I don't think they're going to be as numerous as people expect. And it's still going to be able to play all the older games anyway, so you're not really losing anything. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, I'm going to buy one just to play Xenoblade Chronicles. Uh, I probably would wait if they hadn't announced any other games, but they announced Xenoblade Chronicles, so I'm in. Um, yeah. I don't know. It... But I can see where people are upset. I can see why. I understand it. And I'm right there with you. But it's not like Nintendo hasn't tried this before. I mean, who hasn't been used to them just kind of releasing a new thing every year? Yes. Yeah. Because that's what they've been doing for a while now. I mean, they did that with... They do that with everything. They do that with... You know, Sony did it with the PlayStation 3... Where, you know, the first model played everything, PS2, PS1, this, then the slim model played just PS3 and PS1, and then they came out with the little slider redesign one. I guess that's not... Yeah, that's kind of the same thing, because they're taking games away. Or Microsoft just pulled it with the uh, Xbox One, because now they're releasing a bundle that does not have a Kinect. So their whole promise of everybody having a Kinect... You know, developers who are making Kinect games now look at their market and they go, okay, we have, I don't know how many units the Xbox One has sold, like 4 million. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, I just pulled up a chart of the timeline of the entire DS family. Oh, yeah? Do um, tell. Um, the original DS came out at the end of 2005. Yep. Or end of 2004. Oh, that's right, because uh, I, I got and it then, before I graduated high and school. And then uh, the DS Lite came out the start of 2006. And then there was a two-year gap to when they released the uh, DSi at the end of 2008, and the DSi XL at the end of 2009, then the 3DS at the beginning of 2011, then the 3DS XL in the middle of 2012, and then the 2DS at the end of 2013, and now they're releasing the new 3DS at the uh, end of 2014. So yeah, they've been pretty much releasing a new system every year since yeah. the uh, DSi. Yeah. And like I said, price-wise, it's not that big of a expenditure. I mean, I know for some people it will be, and... Yeah. I totally get that, but it's not the same as Sony coming out with a new PS4 that goes, oh yeah, this one has more RAM so we can play better games, so those of you who bought the PS4 are screwed. <laughs> go, this one's $500 and you gotta go buy it now. Uh -huh. I, I really think this new 3DS is going to go the route of the DSi or the Game Boy Color where there's just going to be a handful of games that use it and everything else will just be fine. Un unless it sells, like, 20 million units, then you'll start to see third-party developers really put their uh, muscle behind it and really make it the de facto standard. 
Well, the one way that I can figure they could push the system is that they uh, bundle it with uh, Super Smash Bros. But of course, that's not going to happen since that's not coming out this Christmas. Right. That yeah, that was another issue. Was like if you're going to launch new hardware, you want it un- you want it framed against some big title. Um, like the like the um, the 2DS was released the same day as Pokemon on the 3DS. Mm-hmm. So when people went in to get Pokemon, they could look and go, "Oh, hey, look, a really cheap system that plays Pokemon. That's all I really need." And they bought the 2DS. Um, surprisingly, the 2DS sold better than I expected. I think that's just partly in line because it was cheaper and it was coming with Pokemon in some respects. Yeah, yeah, it was. You could buy a copy of Pokemon and the and the 2DS for the same price as an original 3DS. Yep. So, you know that there's that. Um, supposedly, it's also going to improve some way of copying your saves to your computer. Um, I'm not sure if that means that with this system they're going to get away from that draconian everything you download gets saved to the system bullcrap that I hate um but maybe yeah, maybe, maybe hopefully I, I just hope that they come up with a better stupid um account system that actually handles all that instead of nope everything on this system is what's on this system you get a new system you gotta transfer it else you're not gonna get it again you have to rebuy it every, yeah cause every other company because everyone, everyone has an, has, 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 has an account-based system where you just log into your account and you have access to everything you've ever bought in that account. Yeah, it's like accessing Steam from a new computer. Yeah. You just go through a small verification and then they go, okay, it's you, here's all your stuff, and you just gotta re-download it. Same thing with, like, the PS Vita. If I took, you know, if I got a new PS Vita, I just take my memory card out, put it in the new system, re-download all my stuff. Or even, you know, the Xbox, PS3. It's everybody else does it <laughs> under an account system, and Nintendo has account systems set up that you have to log into every time you get on the eShop. But that's just managing your uh, money. So yeah, that's just managing so other people don't charge on your account. But they could very easily, very easily, just go into an account-based system. Yeah. Very simply. And the fact that they don't uh, really puts me off on buying whatever DLC they put out. Um, but anyway, we've been over that before. Anyway, so it'll be interesting to see how this new 3DS d- does. Um, obviously, I'm going to buy it, especially if they put out some kind of Xenoblade Chronicles bundle. My only comp- my only other issue would be like with general casual people. Like I know Nintendo said so they're not targeting them anymore or whatever, but I mean if you know grandma goes into the video game store or the major retail store and says oh my jimmy wants a 3ds and the and if the person working in the department doesn't know anything about video games they're gonna go well do you want this one or this one and she won't know that the one she's holding her left is the new 3ds with the you know improved Mm -hmm. processor and all that stuff i mean hell it happens i walked into the into the store that i work at and i went yeah i want to get that new sonic game for the wii Sonic? Who? What? What are you talking about? Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog? Never heard of him. You've never heard of Sonic the Hedgehog? How have you not heard of Sonic the Hedgehog? Um, he's blue and he runs really fast and his games are fun and there's a new one supposed to come out and do you have it or not? <laughs> you know, so you're not always going to walk into a place that has knowledgeable people that are going to know the difference. Hopefully that's the case, but, you know. Yeah. I'm just, you're going to have a lot of really upset kids who, on Christmas morning or around their birthday, are going to open up a 3DS XL, and their mom's going to go, that's the one you wanted, right? And they're going to go, no. <laughs> this isn't and the new the, one, but it's and they're the 3DS same XL. price. Yeah. Here's the other thing. They're the same price as the original models, so here's what I, here's what I expect to happen. All the 3DS and 3DS XL units, right? Mm-hmm. Gone. They're gone. Nintendo should not make them anymore. Yeah. Don't produce. Don't produce any more of them. Let them. Let them flow out of the market. Let them get sold off or whatever. Just let them fall off and just sell this new one. Because if it's the same price, what's the difference? And you would increase 
your your user base for that particular platform. Yep. So if Johnny breaks it, little Johnny breaks his 3ds XL, you don't go out and get him a 3ds XL. You go out and get him a new 3ds XL, and then hopefully they come up with a different name because that name's terrible. But you know, just throwing that out there. Nah, uh, you know Nintendo. Here's, I do. Here's the new 3DS XL. You didn't change the name. That was the name all along. What are you talking about? I just hope they don't do this with the Wii U. We're like, oh, we're coming out with the new Wii U and it's going to have a 500 gigabyte hard drive in it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm stuck with 32 gigabytes internal storage. Uh huh. I don't know. Just an interesting little point, I guess. Um, anyway, yeah, so speaking of the Wii U, let's move on to that. I guess we'll speak about Nintendo in general, but but mostly uh, the Wii U. Now, obviously to start this out, I have a Wii U. I've had it since last year sometime, whenever I got my tax refund back, because that's one thing I bought with my tax refund. Um, so sometime around March... And you don't have one, but you want one. Yeah, there's a couple of games I want to play on it. Okay, so you're not against it. You're not like, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, it was like how initially um, with my PS Vita, you know, I was just like, yeah, there's like one or two games I would play, but that still doesn't justify the price of the, of the system. Until like... I found out that there's six or seven games that I wouldn't mind playing on the Vita. Then I'm like, okay, now I can get the Vita. Because there's quite a few games I want to play for it. And yep. that's kind of how the Wii U is hitting for me right now. Is that now, after it's been out for a while, and now that they finally are starting to get games for it, I'm just like, yeah, you know what, there's a couple of games I want to play for this now. Mario Kart, Bayonetta 2. Yeah. Smash Brothers can't think of the other ones well anyway um so yeah so i don't think again i don't want to say like oh they should do this and that to save this save the system because as i know what i'm talking about <laughs> yeah um but the, again this is just my opinion uh i love the wii u i really do i think it's a fantastic system I think it is the only next gen system and yes I'm I'm putting it with the PS4 and Xbox one and I don't I've I've seen arguments in threads where people are like well it came out like at the tail end and it was against the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 so it's technically not next gen you can't say that like it's it's in the same marketplace it's competing in the same space and so well, yes. well, that, well that's the thing though is that the Wii was what was within that market. <laughs> right. The, yeah. The, 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 it's like the, it's Wii like the Wii was, doesn't exist. So, so then, so then, you know, you get to the Wii U. That was supposed to be their next gen console, which is supposed to go up against, you know, Sony and Microsoft's next gen consoles. They just released it like what a year early. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So, uh, I guess I'll go through some positives and negatives before we get through to, you know, how to save the company from the safety of the <laughs> internet. Quote, unquote, yeah. Uh, so, some of the things I like, and you can chime in, too, because you've come over and we've played the Wii U a bunch. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest thing, it's backwards compatible. Oh, yeah. It's, ba it's backwards compatible with the games, the controllers, um, so it is... That is a huge plus in my book. Yeah, no, it's the, just just if you had like a full setup of like Wii stuff, as long as they're the uh, full motion control Wii motes, not not the old old Wii motes. No, the old ones still work. Well, yeah, but do they work with the? the there's some with, stuff with the that Wii require stuff. the. There's some stuff that requires the Wii Motion Plus, um, and and other stuff doesn't, like with Nintendo Land, um. Man, you need that's... the Wii Motion Plus <laughs> Wiimotes to play, like, the Zelda sword game, but you don't need it to play, like, the the Luigi's Mansion Ghost Hunt game. 
and you yeah. know, so it's it's a uh, <laughs> yes. If you have we, it, it it's it's advantageous to have we motion pluses. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and you could just kind of swap them right over to the new system. Yeah, and use all your plug-in stuff because there's there's even some games that still use the the old controllers, um, like the Wii uh, Wii Pro controller and uh, the nunchuck and Wiimote. Um, and sometimes it's actually the preferred way to play something, which is kind of funny. <laughs> um, well, that, so yeah. that, well, that's like mostly with most Nintendo systems. They come out with a gimmick. Starting games use the gimmick, and then the gimmick just isn't really used much afterwards. You know, that's yeah. just mostly with that whole tablet controller thing. You know, aside... Well, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. But it, but it is backwards compatible, which is nice. Yep. Um, and and a major reason I picked up the Wii U when I did because my Wii was starting to make noises that <laughs> I was worried about, so mm-hmm. I just I just upgraded and to a Wii U, and I've been playing Xenoblade Chronicles on it and everything else with no issues. Um, another positive thing, it's pretty stable. I mean, I I will say it was not that stable when it came out. Uh, there were times when it would freeze up and I'd have to actually unplug it from the wall in order to get it to turn off. Or there's been, you know, parts... I think it was the Hulu Plus application. You'd watch, like, one thing on it, and then when it would go try to go to the next episode, it would just freeze. But all that seems to be sorted out, and they got that fixed a couple... like a month or two after launch. So as of right now, it's actually surprisingly stable. Um, now, if you look at the PS4... Which has been out for, I don't know, how long has that thing been out for? Like, not even a year, right? Yeah, since last Christmas. Right. Uh, There's that glitch that could possibly delete all of your save stuff off your system. And delete your account. Where uh, Nobody knows what's causing it either. Nobody has any clue. Uh, It's just a thing that seems to be happening randomly. But, you know, there's that, that hasn't, at least something that bad hasn't happened on the Wii U. I'm not saying it won't or it can't, but at least it hasn't, and it seems fairly stable. Um, another positive is I love, and I don't use this term loosely, I love the Wii U Pro Controller. I love it to death. I love it more than the 360 pad. I love it more than the PS4 or the PS, well, not the PS4, because I haven't used that. But the PS3's pad, it is my favorite current gen controller. It's amazing. It's a little awkward, yes, because the the joysticks are parallel and the buttons are kind of down a little bit more. But once you get used to it, it's actually really, really comfortable. Um, and for Mario Kart, which I've put a lot of time into, it's perfect. Um, or games like, you know, Mario Brothers or, uh, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. I'm actually looking at my wall right now. Um, yeah. AKA all the platformers. Yeah. It's a really good, (laughs) it's a really good thing for platformers. Um, the, the other thing is I like the, the amount of control options you have. Um, like for example, in Pikmin 3. You, you can play Pikmin 3 with the tablet controller. But actually the preferred way and the way that I like to play it is you set the tablet aside as like a mini-map. And you use the Wiimote nunchuck. And that's it. And it I think it plays a lot better that way. And to be given the option, that's extremely nice. Um, so I like that you have the many different options. And that goes back to the controller's backwards compatible and other things like that. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, and it's a very. Uh, <laughs> I like the fact that it's finally HD. <laughs> oh yeah, it's HD, and it upscales all the older games to HD. So Xenoblade Chronicles actually looks really nice. Um, reading as Xenoblade Chronicles, I always had a problem reading the text. I think you said that too. Well, I, I had problems reading the text because I was what I was trying to play it on a standard def TV, you know, good old tube TV. Right. So, so trying to read uh, text on one of those TVs from a game that's widescreen only, 
it's pretty eye straining. I, I couldn't I could not play that game for more than like twenty minutes before I was just getting massive head headaches and my eyes are just aching. <laughs> right. Trying to strain to read everything. But yeah. Um, yeah, it is yeah, but it is H D. Um so that's that is nice. Uh the games look great. They play great. It, it, it can at least play games in native ten eighty P. <laughs> it has more 1080p 60 frame per second games than any other console out right now, including the Xbox One and PS4, which is kind of funny. Um, uh-huh. It's so I th- and I think I think personally with the with the library it has built up of just the first party games, you could have you know it is the only one right now worth buying because you get because you get your great first party Nintendo stuff. And you get great indie stuff. That's another thing is the indie support on the Wii U is great. Um, pretty much every single um, indie developer who wants to make a game for it gets to make a game for it. I mean, they had Child of Light come out on it. They had, um, what was that other one? Shovel Knight came out on it. Except Binding of Isaac. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, Nintendo's not perfect. Um, yeah, well, well, it's just the whole religious things that they don't like. Yeah, I know, but Which they really should kind of get off stupid. that. Maybe since they're focusing more on the hardcore, they'll kind of they'll kind of ease off that a bit. Hopefully. Um. Yeah, but like I said, it's it's it has a really good game selection for what it is. Um, granted, it could be better, of course, but what's out and what's coming out is fantastic. You've obviously got Smash Brothers, you've got Mario Kart 8, you've got Bayonetta 2 coming out, uh, you've got, you know, anything else they showed at E3, uh, Devil's Third, which looks fun, which is a game I would never see Nintendo publish, huh. uh, but yeah. but they're actually doing it, which is good. Um, so yeah, lots of positives overall, I like the system. Couple negatives, uh, well, one, I don't like the tablet controller. I don't like it. I find it awkward to use. It's it 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 doesn't have great battery life. It's uncomfortable to hold. And the games that do use it, I don't really see any reason for it to be there. You know what I mean? Like like I could be playing a perfect example. Sonic Sonic Lost World. It has to be played with the tablet controller. Why? I have no idea. There is nothing in that game that requires the tablet controller. At least not that couldn't that couldn't be replaced with say a joystick motion or a button press. I just don't see it. Um and I think if they I think the system would be better without it. No, well, like I said, it's their gimmicky thing that they just had to have. I think it's a. I think. I don't know how integrated it is into making the system actually function. Um, like I don't know if you can just remove it entirely from future bundles and just bundle in like a classic controller pro. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, and make that work somehow. But I have never, ever used that tablet controller and gone, yes, this is better. There, I mean, there's Nintendo Land was, was fun, and they were, you know, like the motion game with Donkey Kong, the little Donkey Kong motion game, or the, or the F-Zero racing game. I mean, there, there was cool stuff going on with the tablet controller. But after that, I don't see any reason to own, to use it. And actually, I, I try not to use it. Um, one game that I was going to pick up just for sh- just for giggles was the 007 Legends game, but when I read that it only uses the tablet controller, I didn't buy it, because I don't care. I mm. don't want to have to use the tablet controller. I like games like Mario Kart, like Donkey Kong Country, like um, Pikmin 3, where I don't have to use the tablet controller at all. Pikmin 3 is the only game where I thought it made sense. Um, 
like because you pause the game, you just tap the screen, it pauses the game, you move your your other captains around, and then they go do whatever you told them to do. But that couldn't, you know, is that necessary? No. Does that make the game better? No. Uh, that could be just replaced with pressing start, going to map, finding where they are on the map, you know, selecting them and selling them to go somewhere. There's nothing that the tablet controller adds to the system that I think is worthwhile. Although I will say it is kind of nice sometimes when I'm watching like a movie or if I'm watching like something on TV and I just want to play like Super Metroid on the virtual console that I can boot the tablet up and just play on the tablet. Mm -hmm. So from time to time, you know, the off TV play stuff, that is nice, but I could do without it and I actually prefer to do without it most of the time. Um, oh wait, Sonic Lost World, you had to draw shapes on the touchscreen to make your color powers work. So, like, if you wanted to fly, you'd have to take your finger and draw a straight line. And then he would fly. He would turn into the little uh, red power, whatever, and fly. And it's like, but I could have done that with the right joystick. I could have done that by pressing the shoulder button. The shoulder buttons aren't even used, so... <laughs> You know, I could hit the trailer button and activate my power. I don't have to have the the tablet controller. But I will say, it it is a nice feature, so I can see where they were trying to go with it. I just don't see... You would think after two years, they would, they would try to prove the technology. And they just didn't. I had the same problem with the Wii, to be honest. Like, a lot of the Wii games, there wasn't anything that came out that I was like, man, motion controls makes this game way better. It's like... No. It's like you're, you're given the option to play... You're given the option to play, like, with the Wiimote and Nunchuck and Smash Brothers, but just give me a GameCube controller. Yeah, no, what was it? Uh, Final Fantasy The Crystal Bears? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think for the Wii... Yeah, I finally, like, um, got a hold of that. I was just like, because, you know, I'm kind of a Final Fantasy nut, whatnot. And I was actually pretty much turned off from playing the game because it only used the Wiimote and Nunchuck, and everything you did in it was waggling the Wiimote. Yeah. And it just, it just didn't, it was just completely unpleasant to play because of that. Um, I played um, Tomb Raider Anniversary Edition, or Wii Edition. Tomb Raider Anniversary Wii Edition. Whatever. The Tomb Raider game for it. And I played through like the first level, and you have to use the Wii, Wii Mountain Nunchuck. And I played through the first level, and the whole time I'm just going, I just want a regular controller. Like, I just want the Wii, the Pro Controller. Even games that kind of make sense, like Pandora's Tower... Where you're using the Wiimote to aim your uh, your chain whip, I still prefer to use just the Pro Controller. Yeah. When I play that, um, so that that, that would be nice. Uh, another negative. Well, this isn't really a negative. This is kind of, I guess, wishful thinking. I wish and hope that Nintendo, when they do another update for the system or whatever, will allow you to use the Wii U Pro Controller to play Wii games. Yeah. Like, like I don't know why, but they don't, and it's weird. Because it's the same controller as the Pro Controller, more or less, and if I could just have that controller to play both the Wii games, like Xenoblade Chronicles and Pandora's Tower, Last Story, uh, and play my Wii U games, that would, that would be good. But, wishful thinking. Uh, another, I guess, really the last negative is... It, third-party developers are just dropping this system like a stone. Um, there's no Madden this year. There's no Call of Duty coming out. There's Ubisoft announced they're not making any more uh, T or M-rated games. They're just making, like, family-friendly party games. Which is funny, since Nintendo's trying to aim for the hardcore market at the same yeah. time. And, and the weird thing is, and this is where I said, you know, I'd, I'd hate to armchair run this company, but 
if there's one thing you need to have a successful platform, be it a handheld or a or a console, um, you need third-party developers. You just do. Um, I understand it's underpowered in comparison to the PS4 and Xbox One and PC, obviously. And I understand that the consoles and the PC now have pretty much the same code base, so porting games over between the two is just easy to do, and the Wii U has a an older code base style. Um, but they have to do something. They have to do something to turn this around. Yeah. B- because essentially the only companies still fully supporting the Wii U is Nintendo and Sega. And that's essentially it. And you can you can I can sit here and talk about how great, you know, Nintendo's games are. But I don't think they're enough to keep the whole system afloat. Um, to Nintendo's credit, they said they're not just going to drop support. They're you know they're they're committed to supporting the Wii U, which is great. And obviously they've got Smash Brothers coming out and a couple you know bunch of other games. But you have to somehow get these third parties behind you, even if all they do is make exclusive versions. Or make exclusive games like uh, like No More Heroes was to the Wii. You know, even if third parties just do nothing but stuff like that. And by the way, I I can see Ubisoft's point of view um, in terms of the Assassin's Creed games not selling on on Wii U, and that's why they're not gonna make any more adult rated games or. Not adult, but more mature rated titles. Uh, you know, I don't want to. I'm, I'm not going to hold it against them or anything like that. I think they're just making a business decision. Um, a company like Electronic Arts, I don't. <laughs> I don't. Oh, they're so full of shit. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, come on. Like, like yeah. you put out you put out Madden already, and you're you're still making the Madden game. You know, this year's Madden game for the. Uh, the 360, which uses the same code base as the Wii U, supporting it over from that version probably wouldn't cost you all that much time or money, and you you're just not going to do it because because why? And like like I said, I I see it from Ubisoft's point of view because they did support the Wii U for so long with Rayman Legends and. And the two Assassin's Creed, uh, there was three in Black Flag. There was, they've got Watch Dogs still coming out for it, which they promise, promise, promise is going to come out for it. I don't really see that happening personally, but Mm -hmm. uh, they still say it's coming, so I'll believe them. Uh, But, you know, EA was like, they, they were there at launch, and then they were like, oh, we're gone, we're done. And interesting enough, I did read an article that said something like, EA wanted to run all of Nintendo's online services through Origin. Mm-hmm. And and Nintendo said no thank you, and so that's probably why EA just dropped support. Which eh, I don't know how true that is, but it's an interesting it's an interesting point. Um if there is any truth to that, then EA is just a bunch of dicks, and if there is no truth to that, then EA is just a bunch of dicks, so it's hard to say. Um, I don't like EA. Sorry. Anyone who's listening who likes Electronic Arts, I just don't. And it's not just the Nintendo stuff, it's other stuff they've done. They they just do a lot of scumbag stuff. They're they're scummy. They're scummy, scummy. And I can't stand them. Um, but yeah, I mean, so you Nintendo's caught between a rock and a hard place. They have this console that essentially has no third-party support. And they have to support it for at least another three years. That's kind of a tough pill to swallow, and they've got to figure out some way to get out of this hole that they've dug themselves. And and people can you know defend them. Oh well, they have tons of money in the bank, and they have the three DS is selling well, and so on and so forth. Yeah, okay, but they can't go on forever like this. Yeah. 
it, it just isn't possible. Maybe this console generation, sure. Maybe they can go another three years just on their own game support and their own system, and it's only them. But if they don't fix this third-party problem now... They're pretty much going to be out of the running. Yeah, come come the next generation, come the next console Nintendo puts out, they're, they're not going to have any support at all. And this has been a problem with them from... Actually, from the very, very beginning, from the NES and the Super Nintendo, where they had these draconian um, uh, draconian contracts that they would make companies sign. Interesting enough, I'm, re I'm reading the book Console Wars. Obviously, I brought this up before, but... And in it, it actually describes how Nint what Nintendo would make their developers do. And some of it just was ridiculous. Like, you had to order the manufacturing from Nintendo. Like, if you if you wanted to make a game on the Nintendo, you had to order the manufacturing through Nintendo. And Nintendo would short-fill the order. On, on purpose. Hmm. So if you ordered 100,000 copies, they would give you 50,000 copies. And they'd be like, oh, I'm sorry, you you have to wait in the queue like everybody else. So they would, they would trickle out these third-party, you know, games. That was one thing that helped Sega... Uh, with the Genesis kind of make get a foothold in the market was that they went to third party developers and they went okay we'll cut special deals with you we'll cut special deals with you we won't have these draconian contracts um, granted they tried to have the draconian contracts same as Nintendo and when they realized that wasn't working they actually switched around and uh, you know changed their tune so to say and that's kind of what made the Genesis competitive against Nintendo. It wasn't that the Genesis was not as powerful graphically as the Genesis, or what did I say? It was the Super Nintendo. Yeah, Super Nintendo was, was more powerful than the Genesis, but because the Sega had kind of a better contract with their developers, they got, you know, a lot of times ports of the same games or, you know, exclusive games for their own system that helped them compete. And I think... And then you go to the Super Nintendo, and it was more of the same. You go to the 64, and they that's, I think, where it really hit them hard, because they were still using cartridges while Sega and Sony were using CDs. And you can say, you can argue all day about cartridges being better than CDs, and if it was, if it was right now, I'd probably believe you, but back then, you couldn't fit more than, I think it was like 64 megabytes on a cartridge on the 64. Yeah where you could fit 700 megabytes on a CD. And, you know, and even even with the GameCube, they... Well, th well wasn't it uh, with uh, uh, Legend of Zelda that actually pushed that to 128? Um, I think so, yeah. yeah. Like, it was... Yeah. They, but, I mean, like, it was so small in comparison to, to CD-based systems. And then you have the GameCube, and they used mini-disc. Yeah. Which was, I love I love the GameCube, and I think the design of it was just spectacular. I thought it looked fantastic, um, and I actually did like the mini discs. But as a developer, I could see where that would be a problem because you make this game for the PlayStation Two, you make this game for the Xbox, and then you go to the GameCube and you go, "What do you mean you can only fit one point five gigabytes on a disc? Mm -hmm. Oh no, I have to figure out how to cram this onto a mini disc." Um, and you even saw that sometimes on games where, like, uh, Skies of Arcadia Legends, which was a Dreamcast game, well, Skies of Arcadia was, they came on two CDs or two GD-ROMs, and they crammed it onto one GD, one mini-disc on the GameCube, and because of that, the audio suffered. It's not terrible. Everybody says it's awful. It's not that bad. Um, no, no, the only audio thing that I get, which is just annoying the hell out of me, whenever I do play that, is whenever you kill an enemy, like, you know how in RPG games back of old, whenever you kill, like, an enemy, they'll do, like, a whoosh sound or whatever as they, you know... Yeah, they'll do fade, like a fade-out sound. As they fade out. Well, it'll do the whoosh sound, and then there's just this other noise that plays, like, directly right after that, and I have no idea what it is that wasn't actually on the uh, Dreamcast version. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, they, they've been trouble 
they've had trouble with developers, third parties before. And historically, that's kind of their thing. But I really think they have to, you know, put their nose to the grindstone and work it out. Figure it out. Make it work. I don't know how. But there's there's got to be something they can do. Um, one thing they could do is just buy Capcom. Capcom's yeah. up. Capcom's up for sale, and if Nintendo bought them and had Resident Evil, had Smash, uh, Street Fighter, and um, Devil May Monster, Cry, Devil May Cry, and Monster Hunter, exclusive to the Wii U or exclusive to Nintendo platforms in general, that could help. Um, they plus, could... plus they would get their mature games that they want. <laughs> yeah, plus Capcom's good at making mature rated titles. Um. Another thing they could do is change the fucking name of the system. Yeah. I mean, I have people who swear they're into video games. Okay, okay, perfect example. I work at a, at a retail grocery store kind of place. And I always, I'm always first shift, so I come in around 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. And I usually take over for this girl who happened to be working third shift the night before. And we always have a little bit of time to talk to each other because she doesn't leave for a half hour and there's nothing to do. So she's into games. She was talking about she wanted to buy a PlayStation 3 because she's got to, you know, she wants to play games. She likes the PlayStation 3. And I said, well, you, you, did you think about getting a Wii U? And she goes, oh, I already have a Wii. And I said, no, a Wii U. And this was just a few weeks ago, by the way. And I said, no, a Wii U. And she goes... I have no idea what you're talking about. And I had to explain it's a new system and it's got tablet controller and it's backwards compatible with Wii and blah, 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 and so on. She had no idea. No idea. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because of the name. People here, Wii U, everybody bought a Wii. Everybody bought a Wii. Everybody. everybody. I don't know a single... I don't see a person... I don't know a person who doesn't at least have a Wii, or know what the Wii is, or something like that. So when they hear the name Wii U, I think most of them assume it's either the same thing, or it's just that tablet controller. And that's it. They don't realize it's a whole new system with all new games and everything else. And I think if they hadn't have called it that, if they'd have called it something else, like the, I don't know, uh... <laughs> well, the name we always come up with is Revolution. Call it the Revolution, <laughs> call it the call it the Nintendo Vista. Call it the, you know, in reference to the extra screen. Call it, um, the Super Wii. Even if you had called it the Super Wii, it would have made more sense than calling it the Wii U. Um... I mean, their explanation is, it's all about you, and the systems are going to be all about you. Okay, but nobody else knows what you're talking about. Because that's some weird Japanese-y thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know they wanted to kind of... I think the idea was they wanted to bank on the name recognition of the Wii. Because everybody knows what a Wii is. But it kind of backfired, because everybody thinks they know what the Wii is, so when they hear Wii U, they assume it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I... Obviously, I don't have any, like, scientific proof or anything to, to back this up, but I think if you change the name, you'll see a lot more people buying one. Uh, I, I just... I really have an issue with the name. I don't have a problem with the name personally, but it, I take issue with it when I have to describe to people what it is. And their... Uh, oh, and their commercials are not helping. Yeah. Yeah. Their, their commercials should literally be just Mario, you know, like a 3D Mario. Just go, it's a me, Mario. Play my new system. I turn into a cat. And, like, I don't know, grabs the bell and then jumps off screen. And goes, it's backwards compatible with Wii. That, that's another thing. I think if you walked out and you pointed out the fact that it's backwards compatible with the Wii, I think you'd have a lot more people buying one. Because they sit back and they go, well, Johnny likes his Wii, you know, and then this way he doesn't have to buy any new games or anything. Um, 
case in point, my, my sister wanted to get a new system for her family, and my nieces and nephews already have a Wii. They, they play on it all the time. And so I told her, I said, get a Wii U. Well, why? It's backwards compatible, so they can keep all their games. And she went, really? Huh, okay. And she got one. End of story. So, and again, you know, the controllers are backwards compatible too, so even for the newer games. So if you like playing Mario Kart with just the Wiimote, you can play Mario Kart 8 with just the Wiimote. But that's what I think they have to do. Change the name. Well, you know, obviously at this point, you I guess you really can't, but really push that it's a different system. Um, drop the tablet controller. I don't think they've proven its usefulness at all. And, um, and work with third parties to either get ports of their games or at least you know, make exclusive games for it. Like Nintendo did with Capcom on the GameCube, where they where they did the Capcom 5. So you had, you know, Capcom made Killer7 and Beautiful Joe and Piano 5 and Resident Evil 4. And uh, I can't remember the other one. Oh, Beautiful Joe 2. Granted, they then went out and ported everything over to everything else, but I mean, you know, whatever. Hmm. For a time, that was the only place you could play Resident Evil 4. And so I bet you anything, a lot of people bought GameCubes just to play Resident Evil 4. You could do the same thing again with the Wii U. Find a developer like Sega and say, hey... I mean, they started to do this because, you know, Sega made a special Sonic game just for the Wii U. And... You know, so, like, they, it seemed like they were on the right path, but... I think if they could cut the tablet controller out of the system entirely... That would draw a bit more appeal. I think that would draw more appeal, and I think they could drop the price. Drop it to, what is it, $300 now? Drop yeah, it to, it's, it's 300 Drop it to 250 Throw mm. in a pro controller. Yeah. And then you can sell the tablet controller on the side for 100 bucks. So it's like, well, you want to play Sonic Lost World um, or Nintendo Land? You have to have the tablet, so we'll sell you the tablet. But I think I think it's really... I, I think they were banking on the tablet being a real big innovation and a lot of people really liking it, and I just don't think that in the two years the system's been out that there's been any proof of that being a useful feature. So I think it was just mostly they were trying to bank on the fact that um, the 3DS has two screens, and and how like certain games utilize it as a map system, or uh, or an off-screen inventory system, so that you wouldn't have to go into like a secondary screen just to mess with your stuff or look at a map. Right. You know, I think that's what they were trying to more more or less focus it on on top of its other features. But no one's really using it for that. I mean, all the games that I've seen you play, even... I mean, you mostly have Nintendo games, and even the Nintendo games really don't utilize it for anything else other than it's a, it, it, it's basically a copy of what's on your TV. Yeah. And um, even like Mario Kart, uh, Mario Kart 8, the only way to see the, the map of the course is to have the tablet controller and no one else can see the map. Um, so what a lot of people do when they play, or a lot, what I do, is I'll have it set up on a side table so I see the map. And the new update for um, Mario Kart 8 puts the map on the, on the TV screen now. <laughs> so, so even Nintendo, I think, realized, well, that was a stupid thing we did. Let's fix that. Um... I don't know, time will tell, but they've got to do something, because as much as I love the Wii U, and I do really like it a lot, um, I can't say it's without its faults. And the lack of games is probably the biggest issue that the system has right now. So, good on you, Nintendo. Get on it. Fix it. 
Fix it, fix it, fix it. Mm hmm. Because it's a good system. It's a powerful system. It's, you know, maybe not as powerful as the PS4 or Xbox One, but it is more than capable. And any developer who complains that it's not is just looking for a scapegoat, yep. I think. Yep. Um, you know, they don't want to develop for it, not because it's, you know, and so they go, well, why not? Well, it's not powerful enough. So what? So it's, what? It's more powerful than the 360. It, yeah, it's more powerful than the 360, and you still develop games for that. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, my only thing is, I hope, I hope Nintendo doesn't go overboard with DLC, because I I know they're this is like a whole separate issue. <laughs> going the way of Capcom. Yeah, because like Mario Kart 8 is coming out with DLC, which I'll probably buy because I do really like that game and it's a good value for what you get. But then if they come out with Smash Brothers, the one thing I can't stand is DLC characters and fighting games. I I really think it hurts the game. If there's any game that should not have DLC, it's a fighting game. That that's what I think. Yeah. If there's if there's any game out there that should never have DLC, it's a fighting game. And if they do that with Smash Brothers, um, which they said they're not going to, they said they're not going to put any new characters in or anything like that. But then they announced they're putting four of them into this 3DS game, or 3DS version. So I don't quite know if I don't know. Yeah. Because they said that that they're they're still working on some characters for the Wii U version that they want in the 3DS version since they're supposed to be cross compatible in some way, but then they said, well, we won't put three we won't put uh, DLC characters in, but we have to put these four in because we don't have them ready in time. So now he he here's something I, I don't know it's kind of a scummy move. <laughs> But just to kind of not have DLC, they could have uh, two characters uh, exclusive on the Wii U version and two characters exclusive on the 3DS version. And if you own both versions, then you get all four characters. Yeah, like link. Yeah, like link it up somehow. And because I remember they did that uh, back in the th uh, Wii and uh, DS with the uh, Geometry Wars was that there was a hidden uh, galaxy that you did not have access to unless if you had uh, the Geometry Wars game for the DS. Huh. Yeah. And that was how you unlocked it, was that you would link your DS to the um, to the Wii and then you could unlock that galaxy. I just hope... they. Well, they said that the four characters that they're going to add are going to be free, so I guess whatever, but I just... They said they weren't going to do it, and now they're just going to do it. I mean, it's for free, but it still goes against exactly what they said they weren't going to do. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of a pain in the butt. I just hope that, you know, that's it, and they're yeah. done. And then yeah. they just release the game, and that's it. And I don't have to worry about buying, you know, a new character every week, or buying a new arena every week. Like, it's just... Because it really, really unbalances the game, and I think it's really unfair. Because, like, the example I, I was talking this over with Sandalfon, and the example I gave about why I don't think fighting games should have DLC is you can be as good, you can be amazing, okay, with a character like Dan. Dan in Street Fighter is like the worst character ever. He's like a joke character, he's designed to be terrible. And,. You can be the best Dan player ever. But if they release a character as DLC that's totally unbalanced and you um, don't buy it and somebody else does and you get into a fight, you're going to lose. Because the, because the game got set off balance by this new character that you don't have. So, you know, I think... I think if you want to sell, like, extra costume packs, fine. Because that doesn't change the game itself. You know? Yeah. And don't worry, I take issue with the Mario 
DLC, Mario Kart DLC as well, but it's a racing game that's not technically, and I don't know how they're going to run it necessarily either, because, I mean, if they do it like... They could do it one of two ways with Mario Kart. Either if you buy the new DLC packs, you can only play with people who have the DLC packs, or they can run it where as long as you have the DLC packs and you're the host of the... Or as long as the host, I should say, of the room has the DLC packs, everyone can play on them. That might be better. I don't know. But they but they, they, they strictly said no DLC in Smash Brothers, so I'll, I'll see if they keep their word. Well, hopefully they do. Alright. Anyway, so yeah. Fix it, Nintendo. That is all. Um, alright, so I guess we'll move on to games we've been playing, if you want. Uh, I guess I can start, because I really only have one that I've okay. actually kind of dug into. Which is Go one, ahead. which is one that, I don't know how far you've dug into, but it's uh, Akiba's Trip. <clears throat> oh, no, actually, you know, funny thing, I have not played that yet. <laughs> I put, I put it in, <clears throat> it, it got to my house... Mm -hmm. And I put it in my Vita for like half hour and played it, and that's about it. <laughs> I haven't actually. I, gone I'm back I'm to it I'm yet. actually a couple of hours into it now. Um, I I don't know. It's it it's I, I think it's finally itching this one gaming scratch that I've had for like a while, to where it, it's it's just completely different from anything else I've ever really played. Like I mean, yeah, sure, it, it is uh, and well, technically an arena brawler, um, but th the story is just generally absurd in a good way. <laughs> I mean, if if anyone uh, has looked it up, they would agree with me. But anyone who doesn't, basically, um, you're fighting against a group of synthesters, I think is what they call them, which they're just basically modern day vampires and what you do to defeat them is strip them all of all their clothes so that their entire body is exposed to sunlight so then they dissolve that's it <laughs> and and you level up and get more equipment and, 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 so. and you level up and get more equipment and not not to mention the entire thing is set up in uh Akihabara which as the game constantly states on the box and whatnot that it was a uh, painfully recreated to look exactly like Japan's Akihabara. You know, it's just it's fun to it's fun to just wander. Around That's all I did for the first stuff. half hour. I didn't even go into the story. I just kept walking around going, "Ooh." You know, look just at that. You know, just just seeing all the stuff. And it, it's just as much of a difference to where it's not really much of anything else that I've ever played before. You know, I've been looking for some new original type of game and it pretty much hits it um of course don't be a uh, don't be discouraged it's on both Vita and PS3 so if you own a PS3 you can go ahead and get it plus I think it has a uh, cross play where you can move your saves I oh know. okay I, I haven't looked into that I don't know but um but yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's a pretty fun brawler. Um, all the weapons are just modern day items like motherboards, keyboards, monitors, uh, posters, foam bats, and it has this unique like crafting system where you can craft uh, two weapons together to make them stronger. And oh. It's just it's just a completely different game than what has been coming out for years and years, and it, it's very refreshing to play. It it yeah it's from what you showed me and from what little I've played of my own copy it's it's very quirky, it's very much um, out there in terms <laughs> of content. <laughs> it's its own thing. It's its own thing. You're perfect. Perfect. <laughs> it's its own thing, and it's definitely worth taking a look at if you like um, action RPGs or 
just just weird games in general. I, it kind of reminds me of the way that from again what little I've played of it, kind of reminds me of this game I have on the PSP called um, I can't remember the game name now. It was that one from uh, from NIS America or Atlas, excuse me, on the PSP where you walked around as that um, as that tough guy in the trench coat. And then you'd run into people, and you'd you'd have like a death stare, and then you get into a fight with them. Oh yeah, yeah, I know what game you're talking about. It was oh, I cannot remember the title. All of a sudden, oh, this is gonna drive me crazy. Wasn't it like Tokyo Beatdown or something? No, 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 that was on the on the DS. Oh. Um, oh well. Oh, oh well, I can't remember the title right now. But anyone who knows what I'm talking about, leave it in the comments if you know the title, so I don't have to go looking through my collection. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, it's, you know, it's quirky, it's weird, it's out there, but it's also really, really fun. And it reminded me a lot of that one PSP game that I can't remember the title of. Yeah. Uh, I plan on digging into that a lot more, but been quite busy. Anyway, so that's it, just that one. That and more Payday 2. That and Payday no, 2. No, we're, we're just gonna, either. we're, we're just no. gonna gloss over that every time. Yeah, just Payday, no. just Payday 2. Yeah. Great game. Great game, I'll just say that. So. Yeah. What have you been playing? Um, so a couple games, like three or four. Uh, one is more Hatsune Miku Project Diva F on the PS3. Um, I'm actually really excited. Oh, I love that game to death. I think it's fantastic. Um, I prefer to play it on my Vita, surprisingly, on my import copy, even though the import copy doesn't have all the songs that the PS3 version does. But. I don't know. I like the controls better. I think they're a little bit more responsive, and it's already synced up, so I don't have to go through the painstaking process of trying to remember that it's plus two on the sync meter. Yeah. Every single time. Anyway, um, but I was looking on Amazon uh, recently, and the second version is actually coming over here on PS3 and Vita. So I'm actually just going to buy both copies and just play both copies. <laughs> Is the does the Vita one actually uh, come as a cart? Yes, it's a yes, it's an actual okay. pre-order. Okay, it's a physical release. I know. Okay, they because they brought over because I imported the Project Diva F on Vita from. Well, well, I I can kind of see it with the first game, because you, you know it, it's a quirky Japanese rhythm game that pretty much the only people who would have known about it are the people who know about Hatsune Miku. And that's a pretty niche market, so right. I can I can understand the fact that they wouldn't release a physical copy of the first game, but I think now that they've seen how popular it is over here, <clears throat> that they can finally go, okay, yes, we we can we can have a physical copy of this because I'm pretty sure we can make our money back on printing physical copies as well. And the 3DS is getting a version too. Yep, the 3DS is getting its own little version. It's it's not the same game, but uh, it's its own it's 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 its own thing. So yeah, so um, yeah, the second game's coming out. Really excited about that. Uh, one thing I wish you would be allowed to do, and this is just me personally, change the subtitles to English so I know what they're saying. <laughs> I mean. I don't want to change the. I don't want them to, you know, dub it at all. Like, just leave it alone. But I kind of want to know what they're singing about <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Because some of the some of the songs are really catchy, and it's like so catchy that I sing them myself when I'm at work or just out and about, or I have the soundtrack on my phone. You know, I listen to it, and it's just like if I knew what they were saying, I might enjoy it that much more, or whatever. So, just a thought. Um, yeah, but I, I really enjoy those games. Anyone who likes rhythm-based games like Rhythm Heaven Fever or, um, I guess, Guitar Hero or... I, 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 think, it's, I think it's more in line with uh, Guitar Room Man. It reminds me a lot of Guitar Room Man, that's true. Uh, if anyone's played that, either the PS2 one or the PSP version, Guitar Room Man Lives. Um, yeah, it's it's very similar. It's, very much, it's a lot of fun. Um, what else have I been playing? Well, I played more Fear and more Freedom Planet on my PC. Um, I, I've talked about Fear before, but, man, that game's hard. 
Uh, I kind of got myself stuck in a really bad spot where I don't have any health packs, but I've got to defeat two um, turrets in the ceiling. So yeah. that, that'll that be interesting to try to get around. And uh, Don't have regenerating health to rely on. No, I don't. <laughs> and I like it that way. And uh, Freedom Planet, I played a ton more of that. And I got my t-shirt that I pre-ordered. Or ordered on like a fundraising website. But got my t-shirt uh, t for Freedom Planet. So maybe you want to play Freedom Planet again. So I played more Freedom Planet. I really, I really like the way the dragon character moves and plays. I don't much care for the way the green cat character plays. Just because she's essentially pretty much useless if you don't have the motorcycle. <laughs> um, I mean, she's not a bad character or anything. She just takes getting used to. And then the bunny rabbit is also fun. The bunny rabbit's probably my... The most interesting in terms of its play style. But yeah, again, just great game, great platforming game for anyone who likes older games, you know, older platform games. Um, oh, the next one is Shin Megami Tensei 4 on the 3DS. I finally put that in and started that up, played it for a couple hours. Uh, I must have died 15 times in the tutorial level. Welcome to Shin Megami Tensei. Uh, that's what everyone's been telling me. They're like, because this is essentially my first Shimagami Tensei game ever. Um, mm -hmm. I bought it. I bought it back when it came out because I had Fire Emblem already. So you got like a thirty dollars promotional credit back from Nintendo for buying both copies. Um, plus, I had a gift card to Best Buy, so I had to buy something. And um, once I wrapped my head around how the game works, because they explain everything to you and like during the tutorial level, but once I finally understood what they were talking about and how everything worked and how the battle flowed and everything like that, I I really started to enjoy it. Um, it was when I started playing it more like a traditional RPG where you just go, attack, 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 and then wait for all your characters to do their thing. That's not how you play this game. Um... Then, then I was having a real rough time. But once I understood it, it was a lot easier. The game looks incredible. Uh, uh, I'll just say, when you do hop into Persona 4, have that same mindset. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. I'll have to remember that when I get around to PS4. Um, or Persona 4. The, um... But yeah, no, Shin Megami Tensei 4 looks amazing on the 3DS. Uh, the 3D effect is really nice. I love the, the demon designs. Um, yeah, there's very little bad to say about it, honestly. Other than it's a little difficult. But, you know, that's 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 Shin Megami Tensei 4. It's like if I went back and played Ninja Gaiden and then I complained it was really hard. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's hard by nature. Or, or if somebody plays Dark Souls and they're like, it's really hard. Yeah, that's how it is. You know, so I appreciate that, is what I'm trying to say. I appreciate that they don't try to sugarcoat anything for new people. Like, you, you take your you take your beatings, and you take your lickings, and you learn, damn it. Because people can still do that without being having to have their hand held throughout the entire game. Um, so yeah, having tons of fun with that. Uh, it's good. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Never know how to end anything like that, but yeah. Mm. Um, the only other thing I've been playing recently is uh, just a couple days ago, the Sega Genesis turned 25 years old. And um, I made a video on my YouTube channel, if anyone wants to check it out, just some of my stories growing up with the Sega Genesis. But uh, and, and Phoenix can back up everything I'm about to say. The Sega Genesis is my favorite system ever made. Um... I, it has the best controller ever made. Um, you know, both the 3-button and the 6-button, I think, are incredible controllers. I think the game library is amazing. I think it's diverse and interesting. Um, it's always fun to collect for because you, you find these quirkier titles. And uh, most of the games that are, that are harder to find are actually pretty affordable. It's not like the Super Nintendo, where a good Super Nintendo game like Mario 
world is going to run you $40. It's like, you can get Sonic the Hedgehog for a dollar. Mm-hmm. And so if you're, if you're, if you want to start collecting retro systems, retro games, I suggest the Sega Genesis. Um, it's, it really is an amazing system to me. And so anyway, as, for its 25th anniversary, I just went through my collection and just played games for like two days straight. Um, Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic Spinball, Sonic 3D Blast, uh, Streets of Rage 1 and 2, uh, some more obscure stuff, like, stuff I've even reviewed, like Atomic Runner, which I still think that game's incredible. Um, I played NHL 96, I played, uh, oh jeez, Golden Axe and Golden Axe 2, and Echo the Dolphin, and Comic Zone, and X-Men 2 Clone Wars, and... And I actually, tr- by the way, um, I didn't just put them in for 10 minutes, get frustrated, and take them out. Like, I literally just played and played and played them until I just couldn't play the game anymore, then I switched games. Mm. So, uh, I guess just in general, the Genesis. I played the Genesis. Because, I don't know, it's... I think it's an amazing system, and I think... I don't want to make, like, a whole thing about it, but... If you guys want to know my actual, like, in-depth thoughts, I did put, like, an hour-long video on my channel recently about... Uh... My thoughts and some of my nostalgic memories of the system. Uh, so... And, 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 again, Phoenix can attest, I still have it hooked up to my television. <laughs> it's sitting right next to me, actually, right now. Yeah, no, that's... That's pretty much the system he has hooked up with the entire time. I might swap it out for the Super Nintendo every once in a while, but it always goes back to the Genesis. Um, yeah. So check out the other video I made for anyone who's interested. And that's it. Not too much uh, this week. I was very, very busy um, with other things. So I guess that's everything. Also, for those curious, the end track from last episode was from the game Freedom Planet. It was their tutorial level music. Again, great game. If you haven't played it, do go play it. Anyway, I guess this wraps up episode, what did I say, 32? Yeah. 32 of Welcome to Bonus Stage. Hoorah. Oh, hope you guys enjoyed listening. I hope you guys uh, had fun. Please do ask any questions or comments. Do leave them below. Um, and we will get to them next podcast if you have any questions for us. Um, other than that, I guess that's it. So, as always, I'm your host, Marauder. And I'm Phoenix923. We'll catch you guys on the next podcast.